once you're really tired all these correcting files medical records and these patient letters everything i keep to the last part of the day you know when i'm really tired when i have and i can't do anything productive then you do all that replying to all these routine emails everything towards the end of the day not at the beginning of the day at all even on emails if you have priority list okay this person sends me an email email like shrinivas joshi sends me an email i will absolutely respond first thing in the morning so something of that sort you know you have to have a priority list even while replying to email you can't reply to all routine emails first thing in the morning and waste your most productive time partha gave a very difficult topic not spoken on this before but i don't know really how to put it across to you i really don't know whether i manage time well or not but i managed to get things done at the end of the day perhaps at the expense of something else which i wouldn't have realized anyway so this is a talk for ophthalmology residents how to manage time hopefully time management specifically aimed at you because i think the most of the audience is you not at partha of course he is a consummate time manager do you ever feel like you know you blinked and it's already 9 pm or 10 and your to do list reproduces like bacteria it keeps on growing longer and longer and you need a break that lasted you had a break that lasted exactly 48 seconds you think time is a villain but are we handling this person called time properly or is it really a villain said that lack of direction not lack of time is the problem we all have 24 hours everybody has a t- day which has exactly 24 hours but is it a myth that all of us have the same 24 hours technically it may be true it said that everybody has oxygen so one of some of us may be living in a forest with plenty of oxygen some of us must just have a you know a plant on our desktop so i think it is different each one of us has time but the quality of time that each one of us has at our disposal at various stages of life is going to be totally different it depends on infrastructure privilege that you have i may have different privileges but as a resident you have no privileges at all absolutely i mean you're supposed to work context in which we are talking about and well being sometimes mondays feel like 72 hours and weekend is reduced to two long naps between some guilt in between time flies unless you're in thesis review which most of you are why should ophthalmology residency and for that matter any medical residency feel like a time sink because we have endless opd lines especially in government medical colleges it's not unusual for each department to see 200 300 patients shankanetra i'm sure has hundreds of patients lvp has hundreds of patients and residents are at the you know bottom of the curve or base of the pyramid where they have to screen out a lot of patients we do have night calls in medical colleges we do have surgeries and we have this irresistible age of scrubbing for every surgery sir may i scrub in ma'am may i scrub in so we have kind of volunteer ourselves for more of these tasks so diagnosis is chrono compression syndrome we try to compress as much work as we have within that finite time that we have in the treatment i think is strategic time unpacking or planning the old belief was that i need more time 24 hours are not sufficient but the new belief is that i need fewer distractions clearer priorities and maybe a clone this is a three legged stool time energy and focus and all these have to be well balanced so that your stool is firmly on the ground if one leg is short or long if it is missing then it is a tragic metaphor time is constant your energy and focus fluctuate so invest in high value blocks when you're most alert that's what you should do if you're a morning person then you should invest your morning couple of hours if you say get up at 5 o'clock perhaps you should invest that one hour that you have before your work begins in the most productive or the most important task that you have if you are a night person perhaps at you know 11 o'clock you can begin and end at one whatever you think is most important so whenever is your time efficiency or work efficiency maxima at that time you have to invest it on tasks that are very important this is a famous eisenhower box what does it tell you 
if something is urgent and important do it now if something is not urgent but important do it later something is not important and not urgent delegate it to somebody else who may not be a medical person who may be somebody else who you think would be appropriate for that particular job if something is not important and not urgent just don't do it let me give you some examples urgent and important emergency corneal tear of course you have to do it now not urgent but important thesis of course you have to do it but do it later we have a, you have enough time to do it urgent but not important somebody tells you printer is not working delegate it to the it guy you don't have to go and repair it neither like scrolling reels of people studying skip don't do it you're not obliged to do it the second uh, kind of a matrix is smart matrix or smart goals smart s stands for specific what is your goal you have to be very clear measurable how are you going to track your progress if achieving a bunch of publications is, is your goal how are you going to track your progress articles that are published or in the pipeline of publication are the measurable goals is your goal realistic if you want to write 100 papers you not everybody is not namrata sharma it's not possible so is it realistic that the goal that you have is it relevant does it align with your chosen path if or is it something which is absolutely off beat not at your chosen path at all except for your hobbies which will be totally irrelevant to what you're going to practice in life but otherwise everything else academic has to align to a particular path and give yourself a deadline these are the smart goals example a bad goal is study more that's a very very generic non specific statement i want to study more but what do you mean by studying more a better goal would be read and summarize chapter 10 of skansky by 9 pm and hit a sack of chips and guilt free netflix maybe that's a better goal the best goal perhaps is to rise early do some gymming eat healthy learn how to diagnose and manage vkh teach your juniors do a corneal tear repair end up in a party limit to a couple of drinks if at all burn the floor but sleep early that may be a more specific or the best goal but whatever works for you i'm not prescribing anything here it's a totally non judgmental non prescriptive talk but you have to define your goals and you have to try to have a better goal well how many of you do this before you sleep the last 10 minutes before you sleep do you think what am i going to do the next day or you just crash out maybe at some stage in life you should start doing it before you sleep plan for the next day maybe it's a day full of surgeries but you have to plan for the day give that extra 10 minutes before you sleep to plan so that your output actually increases it's a scientific study which shows that your output actually increases by a quarter 25% if you plan for the next day that's very important so you have to have a daily planning ritual that's called hemingway style in uh, management matrices write tomorrow's outline today 10 minutes what is pomodoro it's a italian word for tomato there's a that's a technique actually pomodoro technique italian tomato saves lives 25 minutes focus 5 minutes break and reward yourself so repeat 4x and then take a longer break so basically you are having high energy sessions with short breaks in between and after a few whatever that suits you high energy sessions you take a longer break so that you rewind yourself that's exactly the pomodoro technique but don't practice that pomodoro to technique where you end up eating a sack full of doritos and end up very heavy right so pomodoro technique is prescribed but pomodoro technique is not track time for a week see how you are spending your time for a week just as a kind of case study you know you all have rough tracking of what you have done the previous week you may discover that you have spent 2 hours daily on pointless group chats gossip 40 minutes deciding what to eat every day before you order on swiggy 20 minutes finding your keys again and again so you may actually find that pattern and that's all wasted time and you actually have a solution for all this isn't it 
try to say no learn to say no a person who can't say no is bound to many masters in fact you have to say no to many things in life decline whatever that drains your time your energy and focus are finite you have to realize it start saying no it could be anything give a good ex- ex- excuse i would love to do this sir but i have already overbooked myself with crying over neuro ophthalmology notes so that's a good excuse no yeah so learn to say no it's very important to learn to say no then unwinding is important almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes including you and that is true you have to recharge slowly like a human being not speed charge on a mobile sleep more than coffee have more water than energy drinks and perhaps more walking than doom scroll what is doom scroll right something negative news that you're scrolling all through maybe ndtv 247 which has all the bad news now so don't do that instead of that do some physical activity that will reenergize shorter way to do many things is to do one thing at a time here i differ slightly from what namrata said one task at a time is important for me at least if i am doing something i would rather finish most of it before i go to the next task avoid much multitasking don't eat type a case report answer your consultant and counsel a patient at the same time i can't do that at least since this is based on my experience patha said based it on your experience i would say that you would be rather good not multitasking too much possibly then you'll call your patient a pizza and send a case to your mom so it's not a good idea to multitask too much if you get even a little bit confused 8020 rule residency edition it is actually true for everybody 20% of your task give you 80% of results so you have to figure out what is that 20% that will give you 80% results i know my you know um, comfort zone so whatever i do uh, i get maximum results that's what i try to do and i don't indulge in that 80% uh, efforts to get 20% results i just leave it i i don't get into that at all so you have to figure out what works for you and do whatever that gives you the best results next is delegate obviously it's strat- strategic laziness delegating responsibility you don't have to do everything you have your juniors you have your seniors let the seniors take the blame let the junior handle juniors handle the files and torch etc use template shared protocols you if your institute has a specific way of writing prescriptions post operative notes get those templates from seniors and follow exactly that until your consultant points out that you know this needs a change if you have emr that's very good because it comes with all the built in templates if you don't have emr you have to have paper templates so that you don't re- rediscover wheels whatever that has worked for the last 10 years will work for you you don't have to redesign reinvent you know in fact um, everything should be recycled all the templates checklists then if you really want to take everything of all, all that i said seriously then reflect that rac method weekly audit what drained you what made you feel smart and what can you do better next week record analyze and change well finally the truth bomb is that it's not at all about time management it's about decision management really how do you want to use whatever that is at your disposable to get the best result for yourself and people around you and what is expected out of you every yes to something is a no to something else perhaps sleep and time like vision once you lose it it's very hard to get it back it's impossible to get it back and to reframe everything the big reframe are 24 hours enough yes if you choose wisely say no boldly with good excuses of course rest unapologetically and laugh without restraint time is really the only capital that human beings have human beings have and the only thing that we can we c- he can't afford to lose so key is not to spend time but in investing it invest time in what matters learning patience and rest so finally until we can manage time we can manage nothing else that's what was said so you don't need more hours you simply need more clarity for yourself at every stage that you are in and that i'm sure would help you